So, today I would like to talk about the problem of evil. Who solved the problem of evil? Hindis and Buddhists a long time ago. What's the Judeo-Christian concept of evil? Don't even mention that. No. The problem of evil is essentially the problem of evaluation. It arises from the tension between sameness, otherness and nature. A man is captured by forces whose nature fall on his head like a mountain when he contradicts them. He creates tension and turmoil among other natures and substances that are repugnant to them and him. They have their own perceptions, inclinations, senses of contact with reality, trade-offs, insights and attitudes towards complicated rules that permeate the world in question. To recapture human nature, to redefine it is like dancing with everything that contradicts it, either by the law of inertia or by the law of inclination, attraction or repulsion. The only way to overcome this contradiction is consciousness, energy, direction and an unwavering determination. Whenever it is possible, call the help from above, the shielding of the discovered, determined rules, perception, memories and cognitions, the protection and active walk with them acts like a seal on the grand walk of life. According to human understanding, evil is not equal to matter or disincarnated malice, but to the lack of formation, principles and humanity connected with the reflection of the finest inner truth, ethos, responsibility and one's daimon. The greater the firmness and stability in continuous righteousness, rectitude that guards the high nature, the discovered demon, the more robust is the defense against the concept of evil. The lack of a determined attitude to defend oneself, to overcome vices and defilements in an inner gigantomachia is too often projected onto some god, the devil, nature or some other force. But when we engage in responsible gigantomachia, even if our defenses are shaken by something external that is constantly malignant and destructive, it was worth the fight. The sources of so-called evil may be many, including disincarnate natures, but they are mainly produced by the kleshas, as defined by the Buddhist and Hindu ethical philosophers enumerated. That is, ignorance, anger, pride, envy, hatred, selfishness, attachment, to name a few. In a succession of mutations, variations, kaleidoscopic complexes and accumulation, from which more refined poisons arise, known to modern men in their vulgarity and subtlety. These are not mere words, but hidden dynamics, meta-pattern of the living tendencies of the karma, in which the seeds of causality take place. A self-aware being can avert and see the roots of such developments through argument, confrontation, reason, sustaining virtue and good reference points and coordinates. Their variations and mutations become a chain of consequences that produce more so-called evil and like a machine pull more beings under their influence and produce suffering. The pull of the void. Like the golden chain of virtue, the iron chain of vice does not spread symmetrically, steadily and accumul accumulatively, but it is a manifold entropy of rise and fall within changeable ephemeral topographical maps. The problem of metaphysical intervention, or lack of thereof, is essentially a confusion of degrees of reality and a projection of sky dadaism, that is Judeo-Christianity, submission to control. In fact, it is our own human act by which we move towards metaphysics, an individual act, not a collective reception or inception, as some idiot believes further. This is because we cannot fully exchange perspective, it is a subtle cryptography that is part of our self-enclosed existence. If this is so, we cannot share our practical advances in metaphysics with anyone else, because it all has to go through our very own individual consciousness. We can describe, guide, but the lapis must be found by the person who wants to find it himself, herself, and is willing to do so. The work is primarily about supporting, releasing, commissioning or liberating people who are ready to walk the path of gods. Vocation is tantamount to answering the constant call and applies to anyone who chooses to walk the path. Steadily, the Chaldean dictum calling and receiving is, view, is true. Now, let me quickly review some of those kleshas. So, we have kleshas and afflictions here. And uh, we shall move. First, aversion, likes and dislikes, hatred and love, suffering and pleasure, desired, non desired, contempt, disgust, anger, wrath. These are the basic subclashes of aversion. So, 
ignorance as for judeo christians hello lack of knowledge lack of discernment lack of direction lack of principles naivety lack of ethos again what do we have amongst the christians we have delusion and conceptualization conceptualization that is wrong leads to delusion misplaced beliefs that lead to lack of realization realization is contradicting delusion so the antidotes now attachments attachments to truth and the falsehood right and wrong stubbornness selfhood script views belief systems these are all attachments and to be detached in order to be detached and selfless doesn't mean to be willless you don't have to sacrifice your ego your ego must be mountain strong to survive all that but you need to know thyself not is out on tat tvam asi and in order to know yourself know thyself you need to your, know your diamond your nature your inclination your vision your genius where does it lead to what kind of confrontations you survived how did you con your nature what your nature is capable of that's the question now envy who is envious now i belong to the vajra family of the red dragons and envy is not my problem my problem is wrath and anger but among some envy is the main day scenario flawed aspirations disparity competition abstracted values that you take for something worthy now the antidotes are relinquishing self grasping training giving and receiving wish fulfilling dual paternal maternal mind the antidotes to conceptualization realization recognition of illusions even simple dharmas as void back to nagarjuna the antidote to attachment is recognition of the samskara cycle impermanence transience relinquishing self grasping so next one aversion what are the antidotes kindness exchange of self and other knowledge of impermanence and transience now what is the antidote to ignorance it is learning meditation contemplation studying self reflecting and training your insight into causality that is called wisdom spontaneous arising wisdom that comes with the knowledge of causalities co-arising co-dependent coefficients history those who are the prisoners of the present and don't know 3000 years of history well they are the prisoners of the present and they think that now is forever and forever is now deep is the well of the past now pride in some cases the divine pride is reasonable i am proud of my accomplishments why because they derived from my nature and my genius i can call myself a proud person is it false pride it's not false pride because this pride re- pertains to my nature and my life achievements and survivalism now but pride regarding qualities of body and mind that are transient and the mind changes much more quicker than the body the body is changing in a slower manner lack of humility intellectual humility for example i love intellectual humility but sometimes you need to be arrogant and destructive when you encounter a fool so great that your wrath aversion takes over and this unfortunately is something that grows into you and there is no way of averting this if it takes roots in you oh well that's my nature i follow it i may combat it but this is my exponent and the part of my diamond arrogance oh yes that's what i mentioned and the antidotes is apophasis that means that you cannot know everything humility intellectual humility not self bashing and kneeling like some do depriving their sense of dignity of being humane inquiry inquiry into yourself what did you achieve what are you are you just a bundle of nerves and mind and soul and all that or something else you never know selflessness that means that you can switch off your mountain like titanium class ego and look at the world flowing from the third position from the transcendent third from your holy guardian angel from your demigod if you like and observe yourself closely now what do we have here 
are the metric axiom. Repetitions of this will pull us in binarity or the dualisms, so called. I'm a non dualist, but there are dualities that are evolving to surrogates of surrogates of surrogates. And unfortunately, those dualities were scaffolded with religious doctrinary bullshit. And what happened is that it created monsters. So harmony within tension through opposition. So there is tension of natures, of sameness and otherness. The world is at war of particles, elements, everything with each other. But you need to sustain this harmony like a bow. You need to take your bow and sustain the tension within harmony and then release the arrow in opposition because those dualisms will oppose you and will make you swing left and right unless you find the golden mean, the middle and the upward movement is that arrow that you build within harmony, within tension so stand strong so that was a quick little lecture on what is evil because it's not only limited to human worlds because humans are often the worst devils that this world invented, rest assured it also is existent in the other worlds, in the invisible world. And there is no greater demon or devil than a human that taught some being how to behave in very cruel manners. Unfortunately so. So before playing sacrosanct, you religious imbeciles and pray because your prayers are worthless if you don't constitute something with yourselves and I prefer to give commands over praying honestly think what you are made of because making this world a lousy place you think you are of significance to heaven and the gods you're not go pray elsewhere you've ruined all the true traditions And you think you'll be rewarded for that? That's a laugh. Thank you.